Hello everyone and welcome back to Revit Snippets. Great tips you can learn in just a few minutes. This video is brought to you by Tagitize, the easiest way to run tag all on multiple Revit views and sheets. Also, say goodbye to overlapping tags. Tagitize will turn this into this. Try Tagitize completely for free using the link in this video's description. Now, let's say you have a Revit model that has elements at certain coordinates. In this example, we have structural columns. If we look at this particular column's properties, here are its shared parameters for X, Y, and Z coordinates. If you're wondering how I populated these parameters, I used a great Revit plugin called RV Live Coordinates. I have it installed already, so I can open it from here and set it up to track one or more Revit categories. I only do structural columns in this case, so I'll simply check the desired values should be by shared coordinates and then click apply. The app has now updated the X, Y, and Z parameters to report the current location of these rivet objects right here. That looks all right, but what if we now want to move all these columns to new specific coordinates? There are a few different ways to do this. Some methods work well if you want to move just one or two elements. There's another method that can move all these columns at once, and we'll see it towards the end of the video. For now, let's see the easy method to move individual elements to specific coordinates. For the first method, we'll use the project base point. If you haven't turned it on, just to go visibility and graphics. Under model categories, select site and then project base point. The project base point is now on, and it's this little blue circle right here. You can see the base point has X, Y, and Z values visible when selected. They're just called a bit differently. NS stands for north and south, so this is the Y coordinate of the base point. E and W stands for east and west, so this is the X coordinate. ELEF stands for elevation. That's the point's Z value. Let's now change these values to the X, Y, and Z values of the column we saw earlier. First, the X. Then the Y. We can clearly see now that the base point and the column share the same coordinates. What this also means is we can use the base point to mark the new location for the column before moving the column there to match. This is easy. Let's select the base point again, and now we can update its properties. Let's say we want to move the column three meters along the x-axis and five meters along the y. Now that we've updated the parameters, the base point has moved accordingly. Great, all that is left to do now is to move the column ourselves to this new location. You can snap to the base point to move the column precisely like this. And there we go. We've updated the column's position successfully. To confirm, I'll run RV live coordinates again now to update the columns X, Y, and Z parameters. As you can see, they perfectly match the properties of the project base point. All right, so that was easy, but there are some limitations with this method. On a big project, moving the project base point isn't recommended because it's often used to help coordinating different Revit models. So if using this method, make sure to move the base point back to where it was originally. If you don't want to move the project base point, check out the next method. For this second method, we will use a custom coordinate marker family instead of the, uh, the project base point. The family I use is called Dual uh, Diagnostic Tripod. If you need it, just follow the link in this video description to download it. Once downloaded it, simply open it and load it into your model like this. I'll now place it in the model. It's not visible yet as I have the generic model category turned off. Let me turn that back on now. 
this family contains two tripods. One will always be at the family's insertion point. The other will move relative to the first tripod according to the family's X, Y, and Z values. What this means is we can place the family at the project's survey point or wherever you have chosen as the origin of the project's coordinate system. We will then be able to move the second tripod to any desired coordinates relative to that origin point. In other words, the second tripod can act as the project base point if we place the first tripod at the survey point. All right, so let me now move the first tripod to the survey point just like this. Now, I'll change the X, Y, and Z values of the family to match those of our column element from earlier. There we go. Now the tripod is exactly where the column is. If I want to move the column to new coordinates, I can just input the desired X, Y, and Z values into the family like this. The last step now is to move the column ourselves to the second tripod. Of course, snap to the tripod when you do this for maximum accuracy. To confirm, I'll run RV live coordinates again now to update the columns X, Y, and Z parameters. As you can see, they perfectly match the properties of the tripod family. So both methods work, but what if you want to move multiple elements at once? That's often the case if you get the new coordinates from a contractor or another software outside of Revit. The new values will often come from a CSV or Excel file. Imagine copying the new coordinates manually from Excel into Revit. That would take ages. Then you would also need to tediously move each element by updating the project base point or the tripod family before every single move. That would take so much time. Well, luckily, we can automate all that with RV Life coordinates. I showed briefly at the beginning how we could update coordinate parameters to report all elements' latest location. It can also do it in reverse super quickly. Let me show you how. The first step is to install RV Live Coordinates. If you haven't done this, just follow the link in the video's description to get a free trial of the app. Next, open it up in Revit like this and configure it to work on the Revit categories you need. There's a tutorial on how to do this setup. I'll also link to it down below. Next, let me disable Live Updates of Coordinates. In the main app window, uncheck this box. This live update mode is useful if we want the app to automatically update the X, Y, and Z parameters whenever the elements are moved. This time, we want to manually specify the desired coordinate values though, so we must disable live update or it won't let us set the coordinates to something not correct. Now that you have the app all set up, the next step is importing new coordinate values to elements you want to move. You can do this manually in a Revit schedule. To create this schedule, we can go here, select the category, and pick the same parameters we selected in RV Leaf coordinates. Click OK now, and the schedule is ready. However, we typically get the data from Excel, so this time I'll import coordinate values from there instead of editing this schedule manually. There are lots of Revit plugins that can export and import Excel data from and to Revit schedules. The one I'm using here is from MLabs, which I'll also link to in the video's description. It's free and does a good job in most typical scenarios. To begin showing this third method, I'll first export this Revit schedule to Excel like this.
Next, let's open it in Excel, or in my case, Google Sheets. I'll now add two meters to the x-coordinates of all columns on level one, just as an example. Let's do a quick formula here, update all rows, then copy the values back to the correct columns. Nice. Now let's save the Excel file to a new file. Now we're ready to return to Revit. Back to the schedule, we can import Excel data using MLabs plugin. Let's go here, select the new Excel file and click import. you can see that the schedule rows have been updated. For the final step, let's return to RV Live Coordinates and click Move Items to Coordinates. You can choose to move all elements that are affected by the current settings as structural columns in our case, or just a few selected objects. I'm gonna do all elements this time. Finally, click on Move Elements to Coordinates. And now it's done. All columns have moved two meters along the x-axis. Let me undo and redo it so you can really see the change. The change is clear if you look at the tripod family. It didn't move. The columns moved away from it. Of course, in real life, elements don't usually move in the same direction by the same amount. Here, I just gave them the same movement to demonstrate the method. The Excel data can change in any other ways, and this method will still work. One great advantage of this method is that it works with all coordinate systems, whether the shared coordinate system or a custom system based on the project base point, the survey point, or even the internal origin. Also, you can choose which point on each Revit object the app should use to calculate coordinate values. This can be its insertion point, solid centroid, start points, endpoints, and so many more options. So there you have it, three different methods to move Revit elements to specific coordinates. Feel free to select your favorite method based on your requirements. For me, using RV Live coordinates is the most flexible and robust. If you want to try the app, simply follow the link in this video's description. If you like this lesson and want more like this, make sure to subscribe to this channel now. For now, have a good day, and I'll see you in the next tutorials.